Welcome. I'd like to review a very important condition that most people have. Now, here is something quite exciting because if you're experiencing pain in any of these areas that you see right now in the red, if you are having any symptoms in these particular areas, into the chest, the front of the shoulder, the shoulder, behind the shoulder blade, inside the shoulder blade, down the arm, into the forearm, into the hand or fingers, this is something that you're going to actually be able to hopefully self-diagnose. Now, if you're experiencing these conditions, I'm quite excited because hopefully this technique and the self-diagnosis test that we're gonna do for ourselves is gonna give us a better idea of actually seeing that, do I have this particular condition? And if I do, what can I do to help it so I can take away my pain, or at least the majority of my pain? Now, even if you have a herniated disc, or disc degeneration, or any other kind of pathology, if you have this scalenous syndrome, and these muscles are clamping down within the neck and shoulder area, then those nerves that are running through there called the neurovascular bundle made up of nerves and arteries, if they're being compressed right where it's coming out of that neck area, guess what? That may be part of your answer. So understand when we look at these particular muscles, you can turn your head to the left or right and you'll feel that big muscle come out. That's called your sternocleidomastoid or the SCM muscle. Right behind that, if you stick your finger behind that, you'll feel a bunch of muscles. Those are called your scalenous muscles. That's behind the SCM or the sternocleidomastoid, and they go right to the front of the vertebrae. If you keep going back, you'll feel the bones in your neck. It's in that particular area. Now those muscles is where that big nerve comes out, that big nerve that's made up of many nerves, comes out and makes its way down into the shoulder, into the chest, into the shoulder blade, down the arm, into the hand, into the fingers. So, these particular self-tests we're going to do right now together to see if we can pinpoint your problem. Okay, the first test, we're going to actually keep our arm and elbow at 90 degrees. And we're going to keep our hand straight up. Now this test is about just taking your pads of your fingers like this. And I want to see if the pads of your fingers can touch your hand. Okay, just like that. If you notice that they can touch your hand all the way, then you pass this test. If they can't, if one finger or more than one finger cannot touch the hand, then you failed the test. I want you to do both sides. The second test is I'd like you to take your ear and bring it as far as you can to the shoulder. If you notice you can go at least 45 degrees, you pass the test. If you notice you can't go 45 degrees, then you failed the test. I want you to do both sides. And the third test I want you to do is I want you to go back behind the SCM muscle, turn your head, you'll feel a big muscle come out, take your fingers back in there, and I want you to push in different spots. And as you push, you may notice certain areas are very, very sensitive, very, very sore, because you have inflammation of the scalenous muscles. And you go the other way, and you'll do the other side. Those are the three tests. Now, if any of those tests show positive, then you potentially have a scalenous syndrome condition that's potentially causing you your pain, your tingling, your numbness, your discomfort. As we say, this particular condition falls under thoracic outlet syndrome, although this is one of the most common problems of irritation along the brachial plexus, which is that group of nerves that's coming out of that area. Okay, you finally realize that there's something going on. It may not be a lot, but enough to potentially cause your pain and symptomatology. Is it worth a shot trying to determine that and trying to correct it? Absolutely. So these three things are very important. The first thing, the most simplest thing, a moist heating pad, a heating pad, anything that's warm, a hot shower, hot baths, that will relax the muscle, bring a lot of blood circulation in there, allow the muscles to get a lot of oxygen, allow them to relax. As they relax, you have less compression on those nerves. The second thing you can do is you can go ahead and go back to those areas that were tender. I'd like you to take your fingers, two fingers, whichever, whichever you like, go over those areas and you'll notice, I want you to push in in little circular motions. Go ahead like 10 seconds, then you'll go to another area. You'll do that for 10 seconds. That's kind of releasing it like trigger point therapy. Don't be afraid to go in there and work those muscles because that will relax the muscle and take compression off the nerve. The last self-therapy exercise is the scalenous stretch. 
So obviously our objective here is to stretch the scalenous muscles to elongate it, to reduce irritation on those nerves because we don't want those muscles compressing on that neural neurovascular bundle. So what we're going to do is take the left uh, arm and you're going to grab uh, your left leg or near your knee, just grab onto it. So I want that left shoulder down. And we're going to take the right hand and we're going to pull it all the way over. Okay. Now, as obviously, as we're holding our left shoulder down, we're getting more of a stretch on the left scalenous muscles. Hold that 25 seconds. If you did the opposite one, you're going to grab the right leg, keep the right shoulder down, take the left hand, reach over the right side, and you're going to pull it over a good 25 seconds. You get a nice burning, nice stretch. Don't overdo it because you're going to do more of these in the future, so don't overdo it. And you can do three stretches on both sides. Now, those stretches are excellent, but I ask you one very important thing to do, and that is to beware of forward head posture. The forward head posture of the texting, looking down, rounded shoulders is causing excessive stress and load in the back of the neck and shoulders. That will cause the scalenous muscles to cramp down and squeeze because they're compensating as a result of some weakness that's going on, particularly in the neck and shoulder areas. So those muscles are designed to compensate and work along with each other. So when something becomes weak and unstable, you have to have other areas in the body to try to compensate for that weakness. And those scalenous muscles are one of the main set of muscles that love to compensate. So please, I love to hear how well you're doing. And again, if you have symptoms, herniated discs, uh, whatever degeneration, facet syndrome, radiculopathy, this particular exercise can still do wonders for you because even though it may not take 100% of your problem away, but if you can get rid of 30, 50, or even 70%, you've done a lot, of, a lot of good and you've made a lot of progress. I ask you to share this video, subscribe if you haven't, and most important, make it a great day. I'm Dr. Alan Mandel.